his power in the name of Jesus. Come on, sing it with me. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break, to break every chain. There's an army, cause there's an army rising up. Come on church. There's an army rising up. Come on. There's an army rising up. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, me and Pastor Amy, we cover your people this morning in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Minister to your people. Encourage your people here this morning. Listen, the Holy Ghost has shown me something here about a gentleman suffering with a severe case of heart disease. Your heart is in terrible shape. You are scheduled for surgery with a serious heart condition. But the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you that surgery is going to be canceled. God is healing you right now. Come on, just lay your hands over your heart. Lay your hands over your heart right now. Listen, everybody with a heart condition this morning, lay your hands over your heart. I know the Holy Ghost has given me a specific word of knowledge for someone, but you know when God releases a word, anybody can claim it. Claim the word of God. Grab a hold of it. Say, I'm taking that word. By his stripes, I am healed. God's healing heart conditions right now. Korabashande. You are great. The anointing of God's here. God's healing people with heart conditions this morning. I rebuke it. Blocked arteries. I rebuke it. Problems in the heart wall. I rebuke it. I rebuke it. Blood clots. I rebuke it. A weak heart. I rebuke it. Heart arrhythmia. I rebuke Rebuke it in Jesus' name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. I'm telling you, there's a gentleman who is scheduled for heart surgery. Your heart surgery will be canceled in the name of Jesus. God's giving you a miracle right now. God's about to blow your doctor's mind. I know they did all the tests and I know what the test showed, but the Holy Ghost said when you go back and they retest you, they're going to be examining you for a long time because the problem that was there is gone and they have no explanation for it. And I thank God for doctors. I do. I'm grateful for them. But there are things that's beyond them that only God can do and only God can fix. Receive your miracle this morning. Everybody under the sound of my voice, wherever you need God to heal you right now, just lay your hands on that part of your body. The anointing of God is here. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. I heard the name Roger twice. The Holy Ghost is healing a man by the name of Roger. I heard it twice. Roger. 
Roger. The Holy Ghost is healing you, Roger. Receive the healing power of God from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Roger, be healed this morning. Nothing is impossible with God. The Bible says in Mark 9, 23, all things are possible to him who believes. Anybody who believes God can receive. Roger, today is your day. This morning is your morning for a miracle. God's given you a miracle and he gave me your name to remove all the doubt out of your life so you would have no doubt in your mind and in your heart that this can only be God. Roger, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive your miracle. Receive it. We rebuke the spirit of infirmity out of your body. We rebuke it out. We rebuke it out of your body in Jesus' name. We command your heart to be healed in the name of Jesus. We command your heart to be healed, Roger. We command your heart to be healed, Roger. In the name of Jesus, no more chest pains, no more struggling to breathe. Thank you, Lord for healing Roger's heart this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Oh, somebody give him praise this morning. Aren't you happy that our God is real? I said, aren't you happy that our God is real? No situation is too hard for God. And on this morning, as we continue our series, God is a good God. This morning we are talking about Satan cannot crack God's code. Come on, somebody. Open your mouth and declare it. Satan cannot. He cannot crack God's code. He can't do it. He ain't that smart. Listen to what the word of the Lord. I want to take you into the book of Daniel chapter 2. I want to read verses 1 through 9. I want to I want to summarize verses 1 through 9, and I'll begin to read in verse 10. King Nebuchadnezzar, these kings didn't play games in, back in these day and time. You resist a king and you are a dead man. He could order your head on a plot if he wanted to. And one night King Nebuchadnezzar went to bed and he had a dream about a golden statue. And when he woke up in the morning... He could not remember the dream because the Bible says it went from him, but he was disturbed. He was troubled. <laughs> My God. He was troubled because of the dream he had. He wanted, he wanted to remember the dream, and then he wanted the meaning of the dream. And so he decided to call all of his wise men together, which were astrologers, magicians. I mean, he just had them all. Now, Daniel was among the wise men, but we know Daniel was a man full of the Holy Ghost, a, a man in right standing with God. But Daniel wasn't called yet, you see. So when the astrologers and the magicians, these, the witchcraft workers, when they got in the front of King Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar said, I had a dream, and I want you to tell me the meaning of the dream. And his magicians and astrologers said, well, go on ahead and tell us the dream, and then we'll be glad to interpret it for you. And then old Nebby threw a curveball at him. <laughs> I said, old Nebby threw a curveball at him. Nebuchadnezzar threw something at him. He said, you know what? I don't remember my dream, but you going to tell me what my dream is, and then you going to tell me what the dream means. The wise man said, what coffee, what kind of coffee he been drinking this morning? So the wise man, watch this now. The wise man said, Nebi, are you serious? How can we tell you to dream when we don't even know what you dream? Nebuchadnezzar said, if you think I'm playing games, Nebuchadnezzar said, if you don't tell me what I dream and the meaning of it, I'm going to chop you in pieces. Oh, now he got their attention. So verse 10, the Chaldeans, 
answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asked such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. Verse 11, it is a rare thing that the king require it, and there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. He was going to have them killed. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Are you listening to this? I dare someone to say Satan cannot crack God's code. You see, Nebuchadnezzar's dream was from God. And it, how, it, take, it took a man with the Holy Ghost who can recall a dream that Nebuchadnezzar couldn't even remember he had and then tell him the interpretation there because the man who could unlock that mystery for King Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm going to bless him with great wealth. I'm going to give him all kind of gifts. I'm going to elevate this man in my kingdom. Are you listening to me? Your promotion is hidden in a mystery. Your promotion is hidden in your ability to solve somebody else's problem under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. This is very similar in the case with Joseph. Remember, Pharaoh had a dream. But at least Pharaoh remembered his dream. But the magicians and the astrologers and the wise men were not able to unlock the meaning of the dream because God had that blessing preserved for a man by the name of Joseph. And we know what happened to Joseph when he unlocked the meaning and the interpretation of the dream under the anointing of God. He was promoted next to Pharaoh. Come on, somebody, open your mouth and say, Satan cannot crack God's code. He can't do it because your promotion is is connected to the interpretation or the answer for somebody else's problem. My God. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom, verse 14, to Ariok, the captain of the king's God, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation, not only the interpretation, but he, he told the king, God is going to help me even recall your dream. Now, you know Daniel had to have been walking with God because if he couldn't come up with this answer, he was going to be killed. Watch this, y'all. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, that's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men. Watch verse 19. And Daniel, those, they were praying all night. Daniel, those refused to go to bed. They said, God, you know all things. You can give us, you can show us the dream that you can as a hat, and you can also give us the interpretation of the dream. Man, they had faith in God. Come on, somebody. You want easy answers. Sometimes it takes staying up all night and seeking God, reading your Bible, meditating. Come on, somebody. There were times, me and Pastor Amy, we realized we need answers, and we refused to go to bed. Stayed up from 10 at night and prayed all the way through the 6, till 6, 7 in the morning. Are you listening to me? I remember one time our backs was against the wall. We needed a financial breakthrough. Me and Pastor Amy decided we're going to stay up all night and call on God. We're going to pray until a miracle happened. And we, within a few hours of, of staying up all night praying, the Holy Ghost gave me a word of knowledge. The Holy Ghost said, somebody is about to knock on the door. It's 2.30 in the morning. You know, it can only be God. God said, someone's about to knock on on the door and bless y'all somebody knocked on the door they said pastor sean we couldn't sleep god told us to give you this it was exact it was more than enough come on somebody 
somebody put your hands together and help me give God praise. You got to get serious. How bad? How hungry are you to get an answer from God? Now you know Daniel then was pretty hungry because if they wasn't if they weren't gonna get the answer, they were dead men. They were gonna get hacked to pieces. I bet you can stay up on. I bet you can stay up a whole week and pray. Come on, somebody! If you about to get your arms chopped off, your heads chopped off, I bet you wouldn't even eat. Come on, somebody! They'll have to force a drop of water down your throat. <laughs> you be so you be so intense in prayer. Come on, Jesus. Come oh come on, come on, come on. You know our saints can call on the Lord when we got some trouble on hand. Come on, somebody. <laughs> some of you laughing because we all are guilty. How can you sleep when you're gonna get assassinated the next day? You better call on God. You better get some answers. So Daniel Lim said, we're going to call on God that he might reveal the secret to us. I love verse 19. Who knows God still hears and answers prayers. He said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. This Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 and then verse 8 says, for everyone that ask it, receive it. And to him who seeks, find it. The person who knocks, the door shall be opened. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 says, call unto me. And I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not. God, watch verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Whilst they were praying all night, Daniel began to have a vision. Not even sleeping, he began to have a vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. The king's dream and the interpretation was revealed to Daniel. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changed the times and the seasons. He removed kings and set up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. My God, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. And Daniel got permission to go in before Nebuchadnezzar. And Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar his dream. He gave him all the details in the dream. He described the image Nebuchadnezzar had, and then he told him the interpretation of the dream. And Nebuchadnezzar promoted Daniel, blew his mind. Daniel said, don't forget about my friends. He also pr promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Listen to me, saints. I'm here to tell somebody under the sound of my voice, Satan cannot crack God's code. God have a blessing with your name on it. Nobody else can have your blessing. None of the magicians or the wise men were able to tell the king what Rick was able to tell the king what he dreamt and what it meant. The Holy Ghost had it reserved for a man who walked with God by the name of Daniel. Daniel feared God. He believed God. He honored God. He trusted God. And God gave him the understanding. God told him what the king dreamt. Gave him understanding and gave him the interpretation. Because attached to that interpretation was Daniel's promotion. Somebody put your hands together and give God praise. Satan cannot crack God's code. There are things that God's going to do in your life. The devil can't figure it out to save himself. Are you hearing me? We give the devil too much credit sometimes. He does not know everything. Had he known what was going to happen, the Bible says he wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. Are you listening to me? He doesn't know everything. He cannot crack God's code. Therefore, he can't stop you because he don't know what God's next move is in your life. He don't know what God's about to do in your life unless God prophesy it for everybody to hear it. Come on, somebody. 
eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of a man the things which God has prepared for those who love him, but God has revealed them unto us by the Holy Ghost. My God, my God, we love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Somebody just lift your hands to heaven. Say, thank you, Jesus. My promotion is preserved. My healing is preserved. My miracle, my breakthrough, that house, the car, the job, the position, the wife, the husband, preserved. No one else can have what God has for me. He loves you with everlasting love. No one can crack God's code. So listen, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He loves you. It's time to come clean with God. It's time to make things right. It's time to surrender your life to Him. Without any further delay, I want you to bow your heads in reverence to God and pray with me. Say, Father God, in Jesus' name, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me in your blood. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on Calvary Cross for me. They buried you in a borrowed tomb, but on the third day God raised you from the dead. You are now seated at God's right hand, and soon and very soon you are coming again. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul, washing me in your blood, and writing my name down lamb's book of life if you prayed that prayer with me and meant it with all of your heart let me and my beautiful wife pastor amy be the first to say to you welcome into the family of god your sins are forgiven you are now a child of god we created a booklet for you it's called first steps in a new direction that information is on the screen you can scan that code download that booklet and begin to read it it's a very small book gets right to the point it talks about talking to God on a daily basis that's called prayer reading your Bible we encourage you to begin reading the book of John it's a very simple book to read and understand download this book it'll be a tremendous blessing in your life welcome into the family of God we are so happy you've given your life to Jesus Make sure to download the ministry app if you don't have it. All the information is right on the screen. Because in the ministry app, we have many free different Bible translations that will be a blessing in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. I give myself away. Also, we want to give all of you an opportunity right now to support the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't just be haphazard in your giving I want you to give God an offering of faith this morning put your faith in your giving don't just throw anything at God give God something that means something to you are you listening to me this morning he loves you and he cares about you and you know it to support the preaching of the gospel you can visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give you can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry Cash App account. That address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and the link will automatically be sent to you. 
You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Never forget me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, we love you. We appreciate you and we look forward to being with you again on tomorrow as we continue this series. God is a good God. God bless. Bye-bye.